sometimes on the Games of 90, I have to go back and take another look at shows that I've already inducted for game show garbage. This time, I'm doing that with two previous inductions in All About the Opposite Sex and Hold Everything. That's right, the Dan Enright one-two punch of banality from the summer of 1990. For this show, I'll give you some more information that came my way after doing the inductions, and also tell you if the show got better or worse as time wore on, in my opinion. So, with that out of the way, let's get started with All About the Opposite Sex. Oddly enough, All About the Opposite Sex might be one of the few shows that I review that actually looks a lot better in hindsight than anything else. Sure, it's still super cheap and will sometimes grate on you to the point where you flip to a Kathy Mitchell infomercial, but at least it had somewhat of a charm to it. I think it has to do with the banter between contestants rather than anything that David Sparks brought to the table. It adds more of a human element to the game, which is what the show needs. In later episodes, the audience groups were given t-shirts to denote what side they were on. Sure, it means nothing in the long run, but hey, free swag! And that means there was some investment made to the show. Honestly, it added a bit more to the show, and it had a little more life to it than the premiere that I have in my collection had to go by for the original review. So I can attribute it to a bad first show. However, some of my problems with the show's scoring system and cheap payouts still stand. The final round could either be as exciting or worthless depending on the score in the previous two rounds, and the $1,000 being split seven ways is still super cheap. Is the show still induction worthy after all this? Uh, yeah, it is. It still deserves some scorn, but not as much as I gave it in my review. I still don't regret doing the original David Sparks All About the Opposite Sex video and my direction that I took with it. There's one other thing I want to mention about All About the Opposite Sex. I don't know why I remember this. But there's an episode of Faux Paws that they did on All About the Opposite Sex, and they razzed a contestant by the name of Carlise over her name. Yes, C-A-R-L-E-A-S-E. -E. Like, you lease a car. You have a, a car lease. She actually appeared on the show and razzed them all to hell. And I thought that was one of the best moments from All About the Opposite Sex and Full Paws History. Now let's get back to some shit and hold everything. Rewatching Hold Everything is still an exercise in painful torture. I still can't get past Pat Bullard's smarminess, the cheapness of the IKEA set, and the celebrities not caring about the premise to find any enjoyment whatsoever. Oh, and speaking about the premise of the hidden camera gag, I got an email many moons ago from someone who took part in one of them and was looking for the episode that they were on, which sadly I never found. His bit was to test out a new helmet that was impervious to pain. What happened was in the other room, someone was screaming and then came the obvious hold everything cut. He says, quote, It was beyond absurd. Those people had to have been looking for brain dead people to act as patsies. The setups were so transparent it was unbelievable. Yeah, I have to agree. The setups were so bad that I almost felt sorry for the people involved not named Dan Enright. Now we get to Bullard himself. It's obvious that his shtick worth it on me quick. I'll come out and say that I haven't found a performance of his that wasn't crap, even when he was doing half the work on Here Come the Newlyweds. As for the celebs, there's not much they could do with the footage unless you had them riffing on the bit beforehand. You know what? I just made the show a bit better. Have three comedians instead of regular celebrities, and they get to riff on the footage before they say whether they will do it or not. It would have prevented some really lame commentary from the likes of Frank Bonner and Hal Williamson. Also, Bullard wasn't on all of the episodes. According to game show guru Dan Berger, David Sparks actually filled in for at least a week's worth of shows. I don't know if Bullard was taking a break, was sick, or got axed, but it's something that happened and I would prefer Sparks to Bullard, although that's not really saying much. So yeah, hold everything, still fucking sucks. Don't watch it, even when drunk. I wish I was drunk right now. That's going to bring us to the end of another exciting edition of the games of night. I hope you enjoyed it. And for next month's show, I think I'm going to take a look at a Jeff Edwards show in Jackpot. One of three shows he did in 1990. Until next time, bye-bye!